This is where it begins. Producer Steve Beck reads through our viewer suggestions, and if they look promising, he routes them over to Faces and Places researcher Lisa Groening. From there, they go to producer-director Mary Jo Hurley for scheduling. Then a crew hits the street headed for that day's assignment. Reporter Patty Lowe, cameraman Bob Bullock, and audio man Blake Hurley work together to make this story on a sweater factory one of the segments you'll see on Faces and Places. But it doesn't end there. In fact, when the shooting's completed, the process has just begun. Next, the story has to be written. On any given day, you'll find any or all of the reporters pounding away at their typewriters, composing the scripts the editors will follow when cutting the story. Sometimes this writing requires a lot of reference work. Well, now you know where Ron gets all those puns. The scripts are timed, and narrative portions are recorded. Camp Hancock, track one, take one. When kids at Camp Hancock go on a hike, they're as likely to travel backwards as forwards. From there, the editors take over. Producer Steve Beck refers to them as magicians. People don't understand how long it takes to, to even to make one edit could take five minutes. Selecting the right shot, making sure it's timed just right. Uh, it's, it's a real tedious process, and I respect them for being very, very creative. The final airtime will wind up being only four or five minutes long for the average story, but you can see that the editor's work is far above average. That four-minute story takes an average of eight hours to cut. Each edit is painstakingly matched with music. Narrative is added along with segments of the interview. What you're looking at right now is the handiwork of this master editor. While the editors are editing, producer Steve Beck is producing. That entails finding the best slot for each story. Besides scheduling individual segments, Steve does a lot of PR work in addition to supervising his frequently recalcitrant staff. And that's not easy when you consider all the man hours it takes to put a nightly magazine show on the air. Overall man hours, I, I think we figured it out to be something like 60 to 80 man hours for every minute of show material on the air. Because of the writing, the travel time, the editing. All those things, and you have to multiply them all by three because we go out in three-person crews. The next phase of putting the show on the air consists of the studio taping. Well, it's 7 p.m. when the show comes to you, but for us it's 8.30 in the morning. While Ron and I are out in the studio drinking coffee and going over the stories in the show, Steve Beck and an entirely different contingent are behind the controls. So far, the show is on paper. Now it's the job of these men to put it on tape. Four, black, two, one. Effects cube. How would you like it if someone gave you a $7 it's million under dollar white gift? Feet. Well, it recently happened to Oregon State University. The federal government gave the school a huge collection of photographic negatives. Feet. Director Rick Taylor calls the shots. A director is almost like a, uh, a tour guide. He shows you how to go to enjoy yourself the most. And he really puts the show together in a logical format. I've, I've laid it down on paper, this is how I think it should go together uh, in my mind. But he actually takes the material and puts it all together and puts it in a show format. The TD or technical director for the show is Dale Sundholm. Dale sits behind a baffling board of input buttons called a switcher. Essentially, he takes the shots the director calls for and puts them on videotape. Joel Miller sits at the CMX keyboard. CMX is the computerized editing system that controls the switcher and three videotape machines. It's capable of making edits more precisely than any manual move within one thirtieth of a second or one frame. When Joel is not operating that electronic marvel, he's over at the tape machines making sure it's all being recorded. Next on Faces and Places, a man whose carvings can be found around the world. This is the tape that'll be played back hours later. An artist is usually best known for his art, but in Sheridan, Oregon, there's a wood sculptor. Audio man Ken Shade, better known as Boomer, sits encased in glass, writing levels and making sure the sounds you hear are music to your ears. In the studio, Ron takes advantage of the magic of tape TV to run through a lead for the next story. The lust for gold lured many people to Alaska during the 1890s, but nowhere was the stampede as great as it was in Skagway. And you thought he memorized all those words. 
Our studio crew, led by veteran Jean Normoyle, runs camera and keeps us apprised of the time remaining. By 10 o'clock, we're finished with the show, ready to change clothes, wash off the makeup, head out and bring back another story for Faces and Places.